Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking and subscribing the channel is free and easy, and it helps me out a lot. If you want to go a little farther with your support, I have Patreon and YouTube membership available, which includes access to the Boston Roll Discord server, early access to things I'm working on, sideboard plans, cards I'm buying, you could have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use the YouTube membership option, you get sweet, unique YouTube badges and emotes for the channel. If you want to play what I'm playing, you can use the code Boston Roll to support my channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com. And if you're playing on Magic Online, a CardHoarder.com loan account can let you play any deck anytime. If you want to wear your support, there is Boston Roll merch available. All of these links are in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome to another Boston Roll Legacy video. Today I am playing Elves, and this is at the request of Patreon subscriber Eric. Eric didn't have a specific list he wanted me to play, so I just took the latest Testacular list. Testacular is one of the known elf gods on MTGO, and they're usually doing something cool, and usually whatever they're doing is the right way to build the deck. So this version has all the normal elf stuff you'd expect. If you're not familiar, I'll run it down real quick. Heritage Druid, tap three elves, get three green. Nettle Sentinel, whenever you cast a green spell, untap Nettle Sentinel. So Heritage Druid plus Nettle Sentinel gives you a shitload of green. Every time you tap three elves, you play a one drop, you untap your Nettle Sentinels, you tap three more elves, and you net mana each time. If you have Glimpse of Nature going, one mana sorcery, whenever you cast a creature spell this turn, draw a card. You get to shred through your whole deck with Heritage Druid and Nettle Sentinel. Every time you cast a one drop, you draw a card, you get two mana to cast more one drops with. The big payoffs at the top are natural order sacrifice a green creature search your deck for a green creature put it onto the battlefield greater health behemoth is a pretty good green creature this one gets the job done it arrives you have a bunch of one ones that turn into six six seven seven sometimes 20 20s depending on how big you get and that ends the game pretty quick green sun zenith functions as whatever you need it to early on in the curve you can help pull your combo together or you can once you have 9 mana, you can just get the hoof. Archon of Valor's Reach. This is a choice that Testacular has made with this list. As we can see, there's a lot of white mana, 2 savannas, and three and 4 swords to plowshares in the sideboard, which is not always in elf decks. They're frequently just pure Golgari, but this one is Abzan. Archon of Valor's Reach is a cool one because it can lock some decks out of the game completely, you can natural order for it, and 6 mana is not that much. You can easily cast this card in the Elves deck. Allosaurus Shepherd, huge addition from Jumpstart last year. Green spells can't be countered. This can't be countered. Pay 6, your Elves become 5-5s five until end of turn. This is a protection spell. It is also a win condition. This card is really freaking good. And the newest addition to the deck, Grist the Hunger Tide. It's a Planeswalker that, as long as it's anywhere other than the battlefield, it counts as a 1-1 insect creature. Which means you can Green Sun Zenith for it. And really cool thing about Grist is Containment Priest is a common sideboard card against elves because it shuts off your natural orders and your Green Sun Zeniths. But you can Green Sun Zenith for Grist when there's a Containment Priest on the board because you can choose it as a creature in your deck, but it arrives in play as a Planeswalker. So Containment Priest doesn't exile it. That's a pretty cool interaction. And Gris minus two ability is you may sack a creature. When you do, destroy target creature or Planeswalker. So you can Zenith for Grist and then destroy the Containment Priest by sacking another creature. Really cool stuff here. I haven't gotten to play with this card yet. I'm excited to do so. I mentioned the Sword Supplashers on the sideboard. This is a whiter, heavy version. Leyline of the Void, pretty standard. Just... Got to beat your combo matchups. Four Thoughtseize, four Leyline for the combo matchups. Collector Oof, also for unfair artifact decks. Rex Sage for when you need something fair to blow up an artifact or enchantment on a, a slower speed than Collector Oof. You get that. Wirewood Symbiote can pick up elves and replay them, so Reclamation Sage can turn into a machine gun in certain matchups where it's appropriate. And there's some decks that just can't beat a 10-10 protection from everything, and you just try to sneak it in with a natural order and get the game over with. That's the Elves deck. Let's go try it out. I am on the play in the first round, and I'm going to keep this hand. There's only one Crater Hoof Behemoth in this build of the deck. There's frequently two, but they have the Archon in the second big monster slot. 
So having the one of Crater Hoof in my hand is something to be aware of, but it's not a problem. It's just something to be aware of. I'm going to fetch a basic because the main deck is... I guess the main deck is not mono green. There is both Grist and Arc on here. A lot of Elves main decks are mono green, and you don't really have to think about playing around Wasteland versus getting your colors under you, but I'm not going to think about it anyway. I'm saving the Zenith. I could have Zenithed for an Arbor there, but Land War Elf is the same thing, but better. And it appears that we're playing against... Or no, I was about to say we're playing against Death and Taxes, but that's not true. They had a Flooded Strand to fetch that island. Playing against some sort of control deck, probably. Both of those are good matchups, by the way. Death and Taxes is a straight up laugher, and control decks generally aren't beat to aren't built to fight elves effectively. Ooh, Stoneforge Mystic could change the math a little. Getting Jite is certainly powerful against the deck full of 1 1 creatures. All right, now it's time to do some work. Let's figure out what we're going to do here. Two Zeniths. I have Dryad Arbor, Forest. I can bounce the Forest on tap Arbor, so that's three, four, five mana with Cradle. If I Zenith in between, I get six mana. I have both of my Natural Order monsters in hand. That's just awesome. I think I need to Zenith for, I'm going to Zenith for Wirewood Symbiote, and then Zenith for Elvish Visionary, and then I have my engine online. There's Symbiote, and then here comes Visionary. Wirewood Symbiote plus Elvish Visionary is the best friends club. You never take combat damage, and you draw a bunch of extra cards every turn. It's pretty great. Then I could cast a second Visionary here, it, but it will cost me my land. I think that's worth it. Untap Dryad Arbor by returning this Forest to my hand. Float one. Untap Dryad Arbor by returning this Elf to my hand. Replay this Elf. Draw a card. Alasaur Shep, ready to win the game next turn. Let's go. Please don't cast Terminus. Got a little ponder for me here. If they Sword to Plowshares anything, they have to target Wirewood Symbiote, because I could pick up Ranger or Visionary with Symbiote, and I could pick up Dryad Arbor with Ranger. Right, that Wasteland was really good. Unfortunately, I cannot pick up my Cradle with Ranger. Ha! Well, it's lucky they wasted the first one because I would have hoofed, had an uncounterable hoof otherwise. Time to figure out what I want to do with this. I can, and I didn't pick up my Visionary in the end step because I wanted to play around Plow. I could have had another card here, but I think it's better without it. How do I want to do this? Do I want to expose the Cradle? I think exposing Cradle is front. totally fine. Here is my Shep. Here is my Visionary. Just keep these uncounterable flow of cards coming. Untap Arbor. Visionary again. Drawing Nettle Sentinel, not bad. Okay, here is my lethal board. Please don't have Terminus. Terminus and Stoneforge in the same main deck would be kind of weird, but I wouldn't put it past them. Anything could happen. This is Legacy. And they're just done. They had turn one Swords to Plowshares, turn two Stoneforge Mystic, get Umazawa's Jitte, turn three Wasteland your Cradle, and still just died and it wasn't close. That's the power of Elves versus these blue decks. Now it's time to figure out how I want to sideboard. I think that 
Archon is better as Progenitus in this matchup. Gotta watch out for Containment Priest out of this white deck. Counter spells are good out of the blue deck, but I have the Sheps. I don't think I need my Swords here. I could bring in Thought Seizes, but that's generally not really worth doing. I think I like Rexage as an answer for if I have to destroy a weapon out of Stoneforge Mystic, like if they do get the Jitte into play before they're dead, having an out to that is nice. And I like Rexage better than Collector Oof for the machine gun purposes. Like I don't want to just lose my count my counterplay to a source to plowshares. So I want to get it one and done. We've already had a two for one, and then let them plow after that. I could bring in Thoughtseize. That's generally better for combo matchups and not really for fighting against blue decks. I could bring in Plows in case they have Priest. I could just make them show me Priest first. I could just sh also just shave on Natural Orders and play fair against this deck. Like if I cut the Progenitus and some number of Natural Orders, maybe that number is three and just play a Glimpse deck. Try to ignore Containment Priest. You bring in what, like two Plow, two Thoughtseize? Split the difference here. Do I even care about that? Is that a good play? I don't think I care about that. I think I want three plows and scavenging ooze back in. Like ooze is the type of creature that can win the game on its own, which is not something that a lot of the cards in this deck are capable of doing. And I could still easily cast the hoof, so I'm not boarding that out. I'm going to try it like this, actually. I don't mind cutting Natural Order against white decks, and I don't mind cutting it against blue decks, and my opponent is both. Because Natural Order, you sacrifice your creature as a cost to cast the spell, so it's just gone. If you... If they counter it, you lose your creature. It's a two-for-one. Speaking of two-for-ones, if they counter it, I would really like to get my Dried Arbor into play here. I guess I just will. I mean, they're clearly showing Swords to Plowshares, but it is what it is. And white decks will have Containment Priest, and blue decks will have Counter Spells, both of which are good against Natural Order, so I don't mind cutting Natural Orders in this sort of matchup. I don't like how reactive my hand is here. Yeah, there's the plow. No surprise at all. I really just wish there were there was another elf in place of the swords to plowshares, but I did board in these cards. Oh, they're an Esper deck. Esper Stoneblade. What year is it? I think I so I have two choices here. I can glimpse of nature and draw one card off this nettle sentinel, or I could hold up swords to plowshares. And I think I should glimpse. I probably should have played the Bayou. Because if they have Wasteland and take me off white here, that's pretty devastating, but I don't care about black. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm just trying to get things moving forward. Cycling Glimpse of Nature, you can do you could do worse in a situation like this. And now we party. Glimpse of nature. Glimpse resolves. Nettle Sentinel. And moment of truth. I am going to go for the Heritage Druid. It it's too late to do anything else here. This my druid in. Snapcaster plow. Okay. So they're going to plow one of my nettle sentinels, which is why I sequenced it in the way that I did, because I want the heritage druid to stay alive. They are going to get to connect with this jitte. Unfortunate.
I'm not going to block. Sometimes it's right to block, take your medicine, get the Jitte out of play. Oh shit, if they waste my white source. Okay, good. Oh. Yeah, sometimes you have to block, take your medicine, just get the creature out of play. But if I block, they get to kill both my creatures. And if I plow, they only get to kill one of them. Baleful Strix. Yeah, this is just a fair Esper deck. Seeing the black is scary because they probably have Plague Engineer. We didn't see any black in game one. They fired off a Jate counter right away. I guess they sort of have to wait on this plow. Ugh. Don't like any of this. There's no oof in my deck to Zenith 4 right now. A Snapcaster Mage was like exactly the thing that punishes my last play. Getting this Jitte on board. Bad times. I'm just going to have to pass the turn because I can't plow now that they have a second creature because they could just move Jete over and do other stuff. Guess they could wasteland before combat and just make that play anyway. You got to ponder for me. I cast the Symbiote first, by the way, on my turn, because if Symbiote is in play, they can't minus on Shepard. But if Shepard is in play with Symbiote on the stack, they could kill Shepard. And I think that Shepard is more important than Symbiote overall here. And whether it's more important or not, one of those plays gives my opponent all of the choices and the other doesn't. All right, well, please don't have Days or Force of Will. Swords of Plowshares. Okay, we survived a Jitte connection. Let's see if they waste my white source right now or not. Or just re-equip Jitte. Needle, okay. They can needle my symbiote, which turns which means they can kill the Shep. They named Wirewood Symbiote, yeah, okay, sure. I wasn't going to respond to that. Uh, they chose poorly. All right, well, it's go time. Time to attack with my creatures. Okay, in for two. The board is currently stable. Aquarian Ranger. I could Zenith for zero right now, but I think charging up a better zenith for next turn is a better play shit <laughs> well there's that card is there a more horrifying image to an elves player than plague engineer equipped with umazao's jete Come on. Okay, uh, this is off. There's nothing I can Zenith for here. I'm going to concede this one. Okay, Plague Engineer's in the deck. Good to know. I accidentally boarded correctly with all my Swords to Plowshares in. Oh, nope, there was one still left. Okay, is this a Progenitus matchup now that I know they're doing this other stuff? the Jitte and the Stoneforge Mystic and all of that. I could just pivot on the play into board in all my thought seizes, clear their hand, go for a natural order, and just get off of the Swords to Plowshares thing. Which is pretty dangerous against a blue deck to do. But it is also scary knowing that they have Plague Engineer in their deck, which is a card that is very hard to beat. 
without a sidestep. If I bring in the progenitus and the thought seizes, what happens? I think I have to cut the Rex Age, the Ooze. I think the Zeniths are still important. Visionary is still important. I could get thinner on Heritage Druid. And if you're cutting Heritage Druid, you can cut Nettle Sentinel. Oh, I could also shave on Glimpses and just keep more creatures in the deck. I think this is fine. This is a calculated risk out of respect for Plague Engineer. And I'm going to take it. Whoops, Rex Age should definitely be in the deck over one of the glimpses. Hopefully I'm not punished by that. Uh, this hand is not great. I'm going to ship it. Okay, perfect. I can mulligan, put Progenitus on the bottom. By the way, Progenitus is always in my opening hand. Because when you board in Progenitus, it's in your opening hand. Deal with it. I think I want to put Heritage Druid into play first. And I want to save my Thoughtseize until I'm closer to being ready for Natural Order. I can also save Thoughtseize for the turn before they can Plague Engineer. Just wait till they have two mana and they're untapping into three. That gives them the most looks at Plague Engineer before I check their hand and see if it's there. Time to attack. And I'm going to use this Windswept Heath to fetch Dryad Arbor. It's a pretty aggressive brainstorm. They're trying to get a Stoneforge Mystic in, probably. They can't set up Terminus because that's a basic island. Strix time, okay. Bringing Strixie back. Get a Dryad Arbor. Aquarian Ranger is a sweet one. Time for a Thought Seize. See what they're working with over there. Hope it's not multiple things. So they have Jitte, waste, two Wastelands, Urza Saga, Pithing Needle, Stoneforge Mystic. All right, this hand does not have a counterspell in it. What is the take? No white mana. Is Needle good? I think I want to take... So if they play... Yeah, I think I take the Needle. I can play this Ranger, and I have one, two, I only have two mana right now. All right. They can't draw a blue card. Like, if they draw Force of Will, they won't have a blue card to go with it. If they draw a white land, they won't be able to use their... Then they don't have a blue card or counterspell or anything. Plague Engineer is the draw that I'm going to be really disappointed by. Okay, there's Jitte. Wasteland isn't particularly effective with Quarian Ranger in play. Now I just gotta bet that Progenitus will race this Umazawa's Jitte. Do I want to sack Heritage Druid or Dried Arbor? I guess I'm losing all of them anyway. Alright, I'll sack Heritage Druid. Time to bet on Progenitus. Okay. 
Oh, I should have attacked with Quarian Ranger. That was free. Then they can't pick anything up with Jitte. I was losing that anyway. I just lost a damage. Ugh. I hope that one damage doesn't cost me the game, but it probably will. Knowing my luck. And it's not luck. Knowing how I just played this game is what I mean to say. Oh no, they found Stoneforge too. So does Cauldra plus Jitte beat me? I don't think so. Batter Skull doesn't change the clock at all. It's going to take three hits from Progenitus to beat them. Really wish I had put that one extra damage on them. That is an entire Jitte activation's worth of damage that I missed. Oh, Batter Skull does change the clock because they're going to get a Batter Skull attack in before I can do anything. And I guess if Jitte is used to remove my creatures, then it's not used to gain life. Uh oh, maybe I had to take Jitte with that Thoughtseize. The Foundry doesn't matter. More Jitte counters. I could fetch my other Dryad Arbor right now. I think that's fine. I want to overload their removal. Uh, so they have to gain two life here. Yeah, them finding the white source and getting batter skull is is painful. They would have had to gain use another counter here if I had attacked on that turn that I didn't attack. I'm gonna lose by one Jitte counter, and it's gonna be completely my fault. Let's see if they move batter skull over to Strix, or if they just attack with Batter Skull. If they go into combat without killing my Ranger. Oh, that that's interesting. Okay. That gains a bunch of extra life. Ugh. Yeah. I deserve this loss, for sure. But they are doing cool stuff over there. Yeah, Jitte, now that Strix has lifelink, Jitte giving plus two plus two is the same as Jitte gaining two life. They're at 16. If I draw the other natural order, I can still win. If I can hoof my way through this, maybe. I, I am holding Glimpse, so if I draw a creature, things could happen. Stupid Progenitus. I'm willing to believe I played this game wrong, but at the same time, Stupid Progenitus. Okay, they are finally ready to start killing my creatures. They have killed two creatures, no counters on Jitte. Come on deck, let's draw a creature or a natural order, I think. Uh, There's only 19 lands in this deck, I think I drew all of them. All right, they got me. Yeah, that was a scrappy one. Uh, I made the decision to take Pithing Needle so I could keep Quarian Ranger on because I wanted the mana to cast Natural Order. But the Jitte bought time for them to Stoneforge, which bought time for them to Batter Skull, which took over the game. Yeah, that was that was rough. I think a there were definitely other lines available. There were other sideboarding plans available. There were a lot of ways where this game could have gone differently in different hands. And yeah, I'm just thinking about it now. But I hopefully you all see the lines. Like if I didn't if I didn't board in Thoughtseize and that was just swords to plowshares instead, I hit the Strix and never lose. 
but then I don't get to check their hand for counter spells. Do they even have counter spells in their deck in the Allosaurus Shepherd era? That might have been a macro level consideration that I didn't make. Like I played a lot of elves before Allosaurus Shepherd was printed, and I've only played it a few leagues on the channel since Shepherd was printed. Maybe you just play like blue decks board out their counter spells, and Thoughtseize just shouldn't even be here. I'm willing to believe that too. Yeah, wild match. I'm on the play in the second round with one of the unfortunate elves' hands. This deck only plays 19 lands, two of them are Dryad Arbor and four of them are Gaia's Cradle, so there's really only 13 lands that tap for mana in the deck on turn one. So you have to mulligan a lot of goofy hands like that. I'm going to put Savannah on the bottom and just lead on my Heritage Druid. The alternative is I could fetch Dryad Arbor in the end step and untap with a juiced up Cradle. That risks playing into removal. But I guess so does Heritage Druid. But Heritage Druid, I only lose a creature and not also a land if they have removal. A basic swamp, huh? Alright, please don't fatal push me. Dried Arbor, untap. Alright, we got to my first main phase with the Dried Arbor still in play. Heritage Druid, Elvish Visionary, and. Got a lot of mana going into next turn, but we're not really going anywhere yet. If I draw a white source, I can Archon. Yep, Dark Ritual time. Is it Storm or some Curses, Stompy, Trinosphere, Garbo? Oh, that's so much worse than everything I just said. Oh my god. Liliana the Last Hope. <laughs> Shit. I wish they cast Tendrils of Agony. Oh, and Wasteland 2, you monster. Going after Arbor instead of Cradle was brave. Hopefully I can punish it. Scavenging Ooze is the type of card that could punish it. Guess I gotta attack Liliana. Jesus. They don't have a land though, clearly. They did not make their second land drop. I can beat this Liliana just heads up with the Scavenging Ooze. If they have basically any way to follow up or further pressure me, I'm in trouble. Okay, so I'm going to have to sacrifice. Yeah, I'm going to sac discard the Archon because I'm going to need lands more than I'm going to need other stuff. I'm going to sack the Bayou. Liliana gets to wipe out my Ranger. I can fetch for Dry... Is fetching for Dryad Arbor the play? So if I fetch for Dryad Arbor, I have two mana and I can kill Liliana. I think that's the play. Eat one thing, eat another thing. Just make sure they're both creatures. Attack Liliana. Alright, Ooze is going to have to coast to coast this matchup for me. I actually recorded a Pox League yesterday. I'm sure it's up on the channel a day or two ago by the time you're seeing this. And... I think I based a lot of the updates I made to the deck on this player's pox list. Now that I now that I'm looking at their name and seeing what they're doing, I'm pretty sure this person has a number of pox 50s recently. And the pox deck was really good. Go check it out if you haven't. That's Lone Pox with Ursa Saga. That was a lot of fun. Uh come on with the dark rituals. Okay. So it really is just going to be scavenging ooze versus the world here. They have no cards in their hand. They're facing down a 4-4. Four, four. Land was just about the best possible draw. Let's keep eating creatures and taking turns off the clock. Hope they don't draw innocent blood. Okay. Herb works fine. I think that the symbiote is better. That plays around an edict. And the clock is the same. I put an extra power on the board, whether I cast a 1-1 or give my ooze plus 1 plus 1. And this version, like I said, plays around edicts. Okay, so I can attack for 7 right now, put them to 1, which takes them off smallpox. I think the sentinel is still the better play. Because they do have discard and edicts in their deck, both of which encourage me to put my 2-2 into play. I'm feeling good about this. Pox generally doesn't have a lot of surprises from this position. They either got you or they don't. 
Here come my creatures, and they're dead. Okay, that was stressful. Pox, huh? Against Pox. Going wide could be hard. Going low could be hard. Uh, I believe that they are in Urza Saga build of Pox, just from my randomly having looked at th their own deck list yesterday. Archon on Sorcery is pretty good against this deck. Smallpox, Thoughtseize, uh, Planeswalker, they have, I think it's five Lilianas. They have the four of the Veil and one Last Hope. I don't think I want Thoughtseize in this matchup. I think I want to get on the board, though their deck is pretty fragile. Like Pox wants all of its resources to line up in an appropriate way. And if you can just sort of like kick them off balance, it's pretty effective. I guess I should be planning for Plague Engineer. Oh, this is tough. I think the Archon and Natural Orders can go. I think Craterhoof can also go. I think I'm just playing Abzan 1 1 Tribal because Pox squeezes your resources in a way that makes all of your cards pretty bad. Like, Elves is a deck that pulls ahead by momentum of gathered resources and pox keeps you from doing that i think glimpse might be worse than some of the other options though like one hoof in the deck in case i do get a chance to zenith for it isn't bad how hard am i worried about the plague engineer i guess i have room for another plow you don't really want to draw two plows ever I'm just going to sort of split it between Thought Seize and Plow until I know more about what specifically their build of the deck is doing. I've got myself a no lander here. Mulligan that. Got myself a keep here. I think I'm going to send the Plow. Because Thought Seize does a lot of the same work. And Thought Seize plays even if they don't have a creature, which is not true of the other cards. Thought seizing them plays into Wasteland, but I think that's worth it if I can knock their their hand off balance. Pox is such a hungry deck. Okay, they do have the Wasteland. Dark Ritual Hymn to Tarak. Can I do anything against a Karn? I think I can... Oh, they could Dark Ritual out Karn next turn. And then I'm in some trouble. But if they Dark Ritual Karn, I can cast Collector Oof. I could just take the Dark Ritual. Yeah, I actually like that. Okay, we'll roll the dice on this Hymn to Tarak. See what happens. Splat. They got my Oof and one land. Alright. Could have been worse. I'm gonna get... Forest? Or Savannah. Yeah, I kinda wanna encourage them to use their Wasteland. Because that takes them off Karn for a turn. And in the meantime, here's my Scavenging Ooze. Okay, they have a Thoughtseize. They're going to take Symbiote. Because Glimpse doesn't do anything without Symbiote in my hand. Oh, Tabernacle. That was a good draw. Zenith. Zenith gets a lot worse when there's Tabernacle in play. I can just eat a creature and attack for three. I think keeping that pressure on Karn makes some sense. So that Karn is eventually going to be their plan to win this game. Their hand is Wasteland, Urborg, Karn, and one mystery card. It's finally time for Wasteland. They're letting me get to my turn, which I think is a mistake. Because now I get to grow my ooze if they waste me. Ooh, nice. This makes Wasteland a lot worse. But... The thing is already in play, so I don't think it matters. I'm just going to keep pushing with Ooze. It's too late for the Square and Ranger to be meaningful. I just need to get damage over the finish line before they squeeze me out. Did they forget that Urborg lets Tabernacle tap for mana? Because this Wasteland could have done stuff and they can still Karn. I guess they don't know what's in their Karn board. Could be some important one drop. Okay, there's Karn, and they did tap the Tabernacle to do it. They're wishing for Ensnaring Bridge. Okay. Oh, cool. And Dark Ritual, the Ensnaring Bridge out. 
All right, that's fair. That is certainly a line. This lets me get my ranger in under the wasteland, though. I could draw a card with a glimpse. I could just play ranger. One, two, three, four, five. If they have a mana, they can lattice me next turn. Here's my land. Yeah, ranger doesn't net anything. So I'm going to glimpse and then ranger to draw a card and just hope they don't have the mana to lattice with next turn. Because I can zenith for Rex Sage next turn if they don't lattice me right now. Tabernacle is a bullshit magic card, let me just say. Like this card, the printing of this card is just so insane. Yeah, it's a land. You can't interact with it. And yeah, all your creatures, pay one. Starting on turn one, by the way, because it's a land. Ooh, if they do Lattice, Quarian Ranger can still attack, because it's a 1-1, one, one, and they do have a card left in their hand. So Lattice isn't even a lock here, which I'm sure is what they're pausing to think about. Okay, Karn is making a wish after some consideration. Are they getting, like, Walking Ballista? Retrofitter Foundry, okay. And they have Castle Lockthwain. So they have a draw engine online. Karn is at least two turns away from Latticing. I will pay for both of my creatures. Actually, do I need the Ooze anymore? If I don't pay for Ooze, that lets me Zenith. But if I don't pay for Ooze, then I don't... It doesn't matter if I Zenith. Ooh, that's a Zenith. Okay, so... I have two mana right now. I can Zenith for Heritage Druid, and then Zenith for... No, that doesn't help. What's in the deck? And Collector Oof is okay. I'm going to Zenith for one here. I'm probably just going to end up getting Land of War Elves. Just something that untaps for mana with Quarian Ranger. Birchler Ranger is interesting, but I don't think it's better than Llanowar. Okay, there's Llanowar Elf. Just working my way up to Zenith for Rex Age and a good attack. The Retrofitter Foundry is kind of awkward, and it stopped Karn from dying, which is good, but they're going to have to start paying for their own things under Tabernacle. Or lock waning extra cards into their hand. That's a really good card. Castle Lockthwain. Wasteland. I will pick up the Wasteland target. This could have been a trick, or it could have been nothing. I don't know. Yeah, they have a second Wasteland. So, I get a two for one there. They animated their Retrofitter Foundry. Interesting. Are you going to block with that thing? I don't think so. I can pay for all three of my creatures. Llanowar Elves can tap to keep itself alive. Tap Elf to keep itself. Then we'll pay for the rest of these, keep them around. Struck Cradle. Another Ranger. So I have one, two, two mana. That's not very much. Can I get a Heritage Druid into play right now. I can, but then I, my Zenith is gone, which defeats the purpose of having Heritage Druid. We can play another Ranger. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to chomp attack into this 1-1 one, one machine. End of turn Dark Ritual for a Castle Lockthwain. That makes sense. That's cool. They lose one less life, and that's a good use of that mana. Karn doesn't get to wish this turn because it would just die. Innocent Blood. I think it's Scavenging Ooze is the card that has to go here. Sorry, Ooze. These 1-1s one -ones have to start getting tricky and win this game. Animated their Retrofitter Foundry again. Their tabernacle Triggers. Let's pay for them all. And there's an Herb Organ play, so I'm going to tap my Bayou's first because Savannah also taps for black if I want it. Heritage Druid. Okay. So I have lots of mana now. What's the best way to use it? Is it just still getting Rex Age? If I cast Heritage Druid. Alright. 
Heritage Druid. Untap Land or Elves. Savannah. Use Heritage Druid. Zenith for three. Ooh, I get Grist. That's what I do here. And that kills Karn. Yeah. Okay. I'm in for Grist. I don't think Rex Age actually does anything, but Grist is a complete banger. So Grist can do what? I can just kill Karn. I could kill Retrofitter Foundry. But that just replaces itself. I think killing Karn is the play. I'm going to sacrifice one of my Quarian Rangers. Take out Karn. Now I have a Planeswalker and they don't. That buys me a lot of time. And this is also a win condition eventually. Okay. We've got a plan. Unfortunately, they, they still have Retrofitter Foundry, which is also a plan. But they're under their own tabernacle with it. Okay, that's a cool trick. Instead of paying for it, they just flip it into a Thopter. Neat. Constructs won't get to attack this game, though. They're going to be under Ensnaring Bridge forever. And these Castle Lockthwains are starting to look worse. So anything that finds extra cards at this point in the game is good. They're making another servo right now in their main phase. And casting Innocent Blood. Okay, that's really good. I'm going to sacrifice the Heritage Druid. That one, if I sacrifice any of my other two elves, the Heritage Druid doesn't do anything anyway. Elvish Visionaries, always welcome. I'm going to activate Grist, build a Thoughtseize. It's fine. I was done Thoughtseizing this game. And untap this. Play my Elvish Mystic. Their 1-1 one -one Thopter can eventually overcome, or it will check Grist. Over the course of a turn cycle, they can get another Thopter. So Grist is not actually winning this game. But it is really good. Like, I thought this game was over a long time ago. I'm just looking for a Reclamation Sage at this point. I don't think I'm going to keep my Insect around. Not until I draw a Cradle. There's no Assassin's Trophy in this sideboard that could take out the Tabernacle, so I'm not drawing to anything there. I'm basically looking for Rex Age and Green Sun Zenith. Plus Grist. And they still don't have any cards in their hand. Is Casting Quarian Ranger doing anything for me? There is a Glimpse of Nature still in my deck, so maybe I should hold on to that. It turns on their discard, but it's okay. And make a servo in the end step. They can untap and make it a Thopter and clear a Grist that will cost them two mana with their own tabernacle. But this retrofitter foundry is overpowering my Grist. Grist did its job though. It killed Karn and it's absorbed a bunch of damage so far. They have to pay for their Thoppies. They have plenty of mana though. That's not a problem right now. This game has gone on a long time. Goodbye Grist, my sweet prince. You were good while you were here. We will miss you. Now I just gotta draw green since Zenith and win the game. Okay, their Thoughtseize actually did connect. That's fine. Again, I'm not paying for the Insect. I will pay for all the actual creatures though. Ooh, I drew Zenith. Do I have enough? No, if I didn't pay for Elvish Visionary, I'd be good. One. Oh wait, I do have enough. No, I have exactly three, which is not enough. I could go for just a, a symbiote instead and start pulling ahead on cards versus... Ugh, this is tough. They are empty over there. Okay. I'm going in on symbiote. If I paid for this visionary to stay in play, I might as well use it. Symbiote. Green, untap this. Green, draw a card. Okay. 18 life and the best friends crew facing down Retrofitter Foundry and Ensnaring Bridge. And I can pick the Visionary up in the end step so I don't have to pay for it with Tabernacle. They're making another Servo. Yeah, the wider they go, the more their own Tabernacle punishes them, which is kind of sweet. Because if they eventually pay too much for their servos, they might get stranded with a card in hand. 
which locks which unlocks an ensnaring bridge. I hope they drew another Thoughtseize. That was the perfect time to do that. I can block Bounce, but that plays into Discard. I think I'd rather take the one damage than risk losing my Visionary, which is such a huge presence on this board right now. Needle, geez. Okay. Well, Bounce my Visionary. That was a phenomenal top deck. That was even better than Thoughtseize. If they name Wirewood Symbiote, I'm not going to pay for it with Tabernacle. I'll leave that mana free. They named Symbiote to the surprise of no one. I am not going to pay now. That can die. We've been using the elves to pay for themselves the entire game rather than tapping lands. Because I can untap the elves if I need them. And they only tap for green where my lands do other stuff. Ooh, the Shep. That doesn't really help. Let's draw a card. Heritage Druid. Uh... Is Dryad Arbor actually good? It just sits in play and pays for itself. I definitely want Heritage Druid in play. So I'm going to pass on the playing Dryad Arbor to get Heritage Druid in. And I guess I should just also play the Shep. Let's play around discard where I can. I don't need to tap three elves. I literally have Lanor Elf untapped right now. <laughs> I'm getting too fancy. That's... Pithing Needle, again, insane top deck. I would have had so much mana to use my Visionary multiple times this turn, but instead, negative. Okay, they used Castle Lockthwain instead of using Retrofitter Foundry. Now that they're going to have two cards in hand and a bunch of creatures to pay for, that puts pressure on the Ensnaring Bridge. And if it's a crisis situation, they can just not pay for any other creatures, and that would be fine. They can eventually rebuild them. They seem to be paying for their creatures, though. Here come the attacks. I still have no blocks. I guess I could put Visionary in front of Servo. It's not doing anything else. Like I don't have uh, Symbiote to pick it up. They have Needle. They do pick it up. Him to Turok taking my Dryad Arbor. You got it. Can you get your hand empty? Another Needle. Wow, okay. That's probably going to name Quarian Ranger. I guess it could name the Shep, but I don't think they really need to name that. If they continue constricting my mana, I won't be able to activate this anyway. Yeah, they named Ranger. Makes sense. Okay, in response to this trigger, I'll float three mana. Four, five. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I do have six creatures in play. When does this happen? I'm going to pay to keep my creatures in play at least this turn. I don't know what I'm drawing yet. If it's like Gaia's Cradle, I'm going to wish I had creatures in play. Forest. I can run my forest out. They have to pay for their creatures again. I'm dead in five turns. I'm going to have four more draw steps to these thopters. It's probably less than that. They can take a turn off that clock really easily. So three more draw steps. Maybe I have to let Elvish Visionary die. We held him to Taraku just to get the hand empty. Tight. Tap these three creatures. Then I will pay for the Shepherd. I'll pay for Heritage Druid. I will not pay for Elvish Visionary. And then these three can all be paid for. Come on, Zenith. All right, Visionary. Let's go. Find a Zenith, maybe. Heritage Druid, okay. I will put that card into play. I'm pretty worried about my clock at this point. I've had to click through a lot of Tabernacle triggers this game. I'm going to block Servo with Elvish Visionary. They flip it into a Thopter. Oh, Liliana, that's rough. I guess it's not rough. It doesn't matter. Okay, triggers on the stack. Activate my Heritage Druid. Pay. Don't pay. Pay. Pay for the rest of these. I, mean, I guess Quarian Ranger is as useful as Elvish Visionary is right now. So maybe I don't need to pay for it. 
I am dead next turn. So I have this turn to draw the Zenith. Okay, let's go. So Heritage Druid, one, two, three. This time I will tap land because I think I'm going to need my creatures to attack if I draw the thing that I'm looking for. I'm not going to pay for a ranger. Come on, Zenith. Rex Age. Shit. Okay, I've lost this game. I'm going to let them click through their turn to try to recoup some clock, though. They lock Thwained at the end of the turn to draw a card. Yeah, this was a crazy one. This came down to them ripping Pithing Needle on an important turn, and uh, this Ensnaring Bridge was good. I go drawing a second Wasteland the turn before I drew the Mana to Zenith for Rex Age. Like the, there were a lot of close points in this game, but we get a game three here. I just have to win it in five minutes. I think that I need to just lean into my combo here. Just treat this like it's a game one and try to go off. And I'll have the Rex Age and the Oofin just in case, but I think that puffing them is going to be kind of important. Yeah, I'm cutting everything that doesn't just win the game. I still think the grindy plan's probably better for the matchup, but with five and a half minutes on my clock, I can't play another long tabernacle game. Keep. I'm going to lead on my Nettle Sentinel. And I'm going to play off basics. I don't want to get wasted here. Do they have a Liliana? They have a Thought Seize. Okay, so this is probably going to take Zenith, would be my guess. But I guess if they take Druid, then I can't cast Oof. If they take Oof, then I also can't cast Oof. So I think Zenith is the take. But again, of course, that depends on the composition of their hand. They did take Druid. Let's draw a different one drop. Okay. So I can Zenith or Dryad Arbor. I should attack first. Don't want to miss that two damage. It could matter. Please don't have snuff out in combat. All right, cool. Oof. And they don't know about the backup Zenith in my hand. That is my mystery card. If they smallpox, I'm sacking Arbor, Forest, and Savannah. Uh, him. Okay, they took my Zenith. Yeah, that kind of hurt. I definitely wanted that Zenith. Oh, I think they just clicked through their turn by accident. Sucks to suck. Or they just actually really didn't have anything to do. I don't know. Alright, they're dead on board. Let's go. Innocent Blood. I think Dried Arbor is the worst one. Because I still have six on board. Okay. Double Innocent Blood is pretty good. I can put them to two here. Uh, are they dead? Yes. This costs six to activate, right? One, two, three. Four, five, six. Air Nettle Sentinels of five, five. In for seven. Woof. Thrilling conclusion to an insane match. Wow. We're about halfway through the video, so let me just remind you that if you like this deck and you want to try it out, you can use the code BOSSHANROLL to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com, and you can play any deck anytime with cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. These links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play with a banger. I'm going to keep it. Get this turn one Shepherd, double cradle stuff going on here. Hope they're a blue deck or a Chalice of the Void deck. That's even better. I could have played around Wasteland by leading on Quarian Ranger, but I do like testing with the Shep, just having this in play. But I guess that doesn't matter. Like, they're not going to force a Will Quarian Ranger on turn one anyway. Yeah, maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe I am supposed to lead on the other one. Or playing against Sneak and Show, which is basically the worst matchup in Legacy. So we got that going for us. Okay, Heritage Druid. So try to come out fast here, I guess. Varian Ranger. Cast this Visionary, hope it finds something. How about a Zenith? Or a Symbiote? Metal Sentinels in play now. Okay, I mean, you're dead next turn. Let's hope I get a next turn. That Brainstorm is good. 
for me. That's mana that's not... Like, now they would need Ancient Tomb to go with this Lotus Petal to cast Show and Tell. One, two, three, four. So they would have to Show and Tell put in Grizzlebrand to win this game. And a top-decked Wirewood Symbiote still beats that. I guess they could put in Omniscience. That's always... Jesus, they had everything. Uh. Oh, they had nothing. Okay, sick. Attack with all my creatures, make them five fives, and that should be the game. Built for speed. Bang, take 25. Yeah, the floor is pretty high on a deck that can goldfish on turn two and three. Sneak and show is a terrible matchup, but I mean, sometimes that stuff happens. Okay, Thoughtseize is coming in for sure. Scavenging Ooze is not important to this matchup. Grist is pretty good. You can actually put in Grist off Show and Tell because it's a creature in your hand, and then you can kill Emrakul with it. All good stuff. The Visionary Symbiote Best Friends combo is a little slow for combo matchups. You do, you do still want some amount of access to it, but it's not... It's like the best thing to do in a fair matchup and the worst thing you're doing in a combo matchup. I think I do like Collector Oof because they have Lotus Petals in their deck. Rex Sage you can put in and snipe an Omniscience or take out a naked sneak attack. I could bring in Progenitus just as a bigger monster or a comparably sized monster to put into play off of Show and Tell. But I think I would rather have Archon than Progenitus in this matchup. And I think I got to show have one more visionary here. This is my deck. This one is not keepable. Another tragic Dried Arbor hand. It's getting worse. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Okay. Didn't find a land until four cards. Sometimes that is. I'm going to get rid of, I guess, Quarian Ranger. Yeah, that's not how you win your worst matchup. Raftigger's Cage. Joke's on you. I don't have any cards. I'm going to play the Shepherd, and then I can Wirewood Symbiote plus Thoughtseize next turn. I can't fetch for Dryad Arbor anymore because of Raftigger's Cage. I'll give them a Seize. They could Brainstorm to hide information. Two Impulse, Omniscient, Show and Tell. I'm going to take the Omniscience, I think. I mean, Omniscience is bad without Show and Tell, but Impulse for Show and Tell is pretty rough on me. I, all right, I'm off it. I'm going to take the Show and Tell. And then I'm going to fetch a... I don't think there are white cards in my deck. Or I left the Archon in the deck, right? So you can show sometimes as Blood Moon. So I'm actually just going to get the... I already have a Bayou, so I'm going to get a Basic and play Heritage Druid. I think I might have messed that up. If I play Symbiote, I can pick up this if they Pyroclasm. Okay, they spend their Lotus Battle to cast one of their Impulses. Did they keep a hand on the strength of Grafdigger's Cage? Just like a, a do-nothing hand with Grafdigger's Cage? Because I can beat that. Time to attack for two, and then play my two cards. And hope they die soon. Cradle off the top actually kills them. Because I have four, five, six mana, activate Chep. There's that other Impulse. Come on, Cradle off the top. Let's go. Let's do this thing. All right, they can cast Sneak Attack next turn. Cradle, Cradle. Shit. I guess I could have glimpsed before combat and maybe found a line here. So what does this look like now? If I untap Heritage Druid, picking up Shepherd. Yeah, I probably just wanted to do this with more mana available questionable stuff from questionable people. All right, cantripping into Thoughtseize, not bad. And it is a relief that I wouldn't have won, but also I should have done that pre-combat, I think. Well, here's a Brainstorm, a powerful card, I've heard. If they can show and tell Omniscience. Ooh, I'm getting another turn here. Cradle, cradle. All right, there's the Glimpse. I'm going to Thoughtseize them, get a peek at what's going on over there. 
Because they did just cast Brainstorm and they didn't shuffle. So they are in a Brainstorm lock right now. If their hand is bad, I could just punch over the finish line here. They have a Force of Will in their hand. They just Their life total just went from 13 to 12 and then back to 13. So they have Force in hand and they're thinking about casting it. If their hand is exactly Sneak Attack Monster with Force Omniscience, then you definitely Force this. If... I don't know. Like, tough spot. I'm much more scared of the sneak attack than of the omniscience right now, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but is true. Force pitching omniscience. Okay. I think I have to go for a glimpse here. Like, they're not on a fast enough clock to just punch through. And if I draw any elf off this glimpse, we're going. Come on, elf. Shit. All right, fine. I'll attack for one. Or a two. In for two. They're at ten. Please don't kill me. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can... Oh, Cunning Wish. Is that actually good? All right, did, did they just set up a multi-turn line Cunning Wish for Intuition? Oh, shit. Coastal Extra Turn. No, that's a good one. It turns out. Okay, so... Untap this by picking up this. I want my Shepherd to be the card that survives this return. Shepherd and Nettle Sentinel. Let's just rebuild, keep it going. That's a good use of a Cunning Wish, though. Just make them respond to me. All right, here's the Snake Attack. Do they have the monster? Or are they just putting this in play? Grist. What do you do? Short Target Creature or Planeswalker? Unfortunately, Sneak Attack is neither of those things. They could have baited me and they actually have the Grizzle Brand and just blow me out in combat, but I don't think that would have been the correct play. I just think they don't have a monster at all. Post combat Grist to keep, make sure my Nettle Sentinel is untapped. Plus. And milled a natural order. Nice Graft Digger's Cage. Okay, moment of truth. One of us is dead. Uh, they have Intuition. So they get three Ember Cools here. Or, yeah, they can't get Grizzle Brand because they're at three. Oh, I'm not dead. I have seven permanents. Oh, they are getting Grizzlebrand. Wild. I'm not convinced that's the play. Okay, you got it. Taking out Grist. Then they get to gain seven, go to three. And then if they have a... Okay, did they find Omniscience? Okay, now I'm done. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Firemind's Foresight, they're doing that shit. You got it. Firemind's Foresight for a Braid Brainstorm. Thrilling stuff. They braided one of my creatures. I feel like I should be a lot deader than I am right now. Why is this even still a game? Oh, they had another Cunning Wish. Now they wish for the Shared Summons, they get Emrakul. Or Intuition for three Emrakuls also does the trick. Okay. I just wanted them to show it to me, but they do have it. I'm dead. That was really close. There were two or three turns where if I draw Cradle, the game is over. That's exciting. What is the change here? Is there a change here? I've seen Graft Digger's Cage now, but I already have my answers to Graft Digger's Cage in. I'm not going to bring in Swords to Plowshares. Leyland doesn't matter. Ooze doesn't matter. Yeah, I think my deck is just my deck here. And let's go. This is a strong opening hand. I'm going to keep it. It doesn't disrupt, but it does hit really hard. And I'm going to lead on Nettle Sentinel. This Sandbag the Shepherd. Island, Ponder. They did not shuffle. Uh, okay. No black mana currently. That could change. I'm going to cast a lot of spells this turn. There's Shepherd. Cradle, Heritage Druid, Make Three, Visionary. Looking for Birchler Ranger or Green Sun Zenith to cast this Thoughtseize with. It was neither of those things. Oh, should have attacked first. I just lost a... Oh no, I had mana floating. I was not able to attack first. I will attack second though. Alright, we have another turn three goldfish here. Let's see if we're dead. 
turned off the lotus petals along the way. Ooh, I think I'm not supposed to attack with Nettle Sentinel there, actually. 5, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, they're actually at 1 right now, unless I draw a green spell. But if I leave this back, they take 22. Maybe? Yeah, I messed that up. I hope I don't get punished, but I did mess that up. Okay, they fetched. They messed it up right back. Oh, okay. Or we can just cast Natural Order. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Moto confused me for a second there. Almost paid more than I had to. Okay, here comes Natural Order. This should skip the hole. Maybe they have something. This avoids Chain of Vapor or some garbage. And we did it. Punch through the hard matchup by turn 3 on the play both games. Nice. On to the next round. Folks, I have important news. It's round 4, and look who we're paired against. It is none other than Testacular, the very person whose list I have copied for this league. And we're on the draw in an Elves Mirror. I'm going to keep and hope that they think I'm doing something fair and blue. Because I actually do have a pretty quick natural order. Just see how quick theirs is. Oh no, I drew the hoof. Come on. Well, my natural order is not good anymore. It's going to run out my Lana Ralph and pass the turn. I said buckle up in the chat and I got an oh boy in all caps. <laughs> all right, attacking with, Her with Nettle Sentinel is probably a good sign for me. That means they're not going to turn to me. God, drawing this hoof is such horseshit though. Ugh. Any chance I had to cheese this game out is just gone now. I guess I can natural order for my Archon and name Sorcery and at least not get comboed out by them. Blimps, huh? Does that do anything important right now? I mean, I get to cast a bunch of spells at least. Okay. I get at least two draws, maybe more. If I draw one drop Elf or Cradle right now, I'll get some more stuff. They said you got this in the chat. I don't think that's true. But I'm willing to take my chances. So Nettle Sentinel. Then I can pick up Nettle Sentinel to untap Llanowar Elf. Draw another card. And that's my turn. If I draw a land, I can natural order. Grist might be able to start beating things up. <laughs> they said, all right, good hustle in the chat. Now this is where I get comboed out instead. That's not a cradle. All right, they have the best friends crew assembled. I have the other friend in my hand. They're just looping some stuff, drawing a card. Come on, deck. Jesus. All right. I can natural order. Get the the other thing. I have to. Ugh, this is ugly. I just have to hope that this big flying creature is good enough to win the game. And it might just be, honestly. Really wish I had a Quarian Ranger to go with all this. Pick this up. Natural order. When you're watching this later, Testacular, understand what I had to do here. Okay. Here's my Archon. If they have Grist, I lose. It's got to fade Grist for a little while. They can't Zenith for it. They can't Natural Order. They can't Glimpse. We're playing a creature fight, and I have a 5-6 Flying Vigilance Trample to their Not That. Uh-oh, Black Source. It's drawn more cards. They don't get an attack, because I can just easily block. Aquarian Ranger. That is the card I wanted this whole time. In with my Archon. Put them to 12. Okay, let's do some stuff. Aquarian Ranger. Make green. Untap Lano or Elf. Right, they're untapping in response. Fair enough. Replay my Bayou. Black. Green. Grist. And Nettle Sentinel. I'm going to sack Nettle Sentinel to destroy Wirewood Symbiote. Just try to break up that friend's crew. Here we are. Visionary again. Virtual Rangers. Uh oh. A lot of mana. Good thing the payoffs are turned off. Ooh, another one. We're drawing so many cards. Just looking for that Grist. If Grist breaks open my 
Archon at any point. I think that they win the game on the spot. They just have so much mana. Seven cards in hand. And Shepard. Okay, Shepard could just beat me on its own. Oh, there's more. Another Shep. Okay. And Aquarian Ranger. Yep. Going super wide on me here. Cradle? Not Cradle. Not Heritage Druid either. This Crater Hoof just stranded in my hand forever. Plus Grist. And what else can I do here? I guess I could play Visionary. Draw a card. See what happens. Use Visionary. Could still hit Cradle here. Still didn't hit Cradle here. Symbiote. Ranger. Untap. Lanor Elf. Float Green. Symbiote. Untap. Lanor Elf. Float Green. I still have a chance to draw Cradle here. Don't make your land drop if you could still play Cradle. In a turn. Those are the rules. Okay. Did we do it? Did we do it? Here's this. And here's this. And I'm out of elves to untap. Here's this. I am short. One, two, three, four. Yeah, bummer. I'll get in with my five, six again. Hope I'm not dead. There are some plays to make. I get to hoof next turn if they don't hoof this turn first. Picked up Visionary in the end step. That's good. That means they're not committed to just cradle hoof your dead. They are still digging. That is a 5-5 five, five out of play that they could have been attacking with, and they decided drawing an extra card was worth more. That's only good news. This Birchler Ranger's busted, though. They have Nettle Sentinel to go with it, so every elf, one mana elf is free, every two mana elf costs one, etc. It picked up a forest. Untap Birchler Ranger. Another Sentinel. Now every elf is free. Every green card is free. Or every one drop is free. Every every green card costs one green less, basically, with the two Sentinels. They just tap them for green and then they untap when they cast the spell. Oh no. Six mana's been tapped. I'm getting hoofed. Okay. Activated Shepherd. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I have to block three of these. All right, well, before blocks, do I want to pick up an elf or do I want to block and then pick up an elf? If I go insect here, Archon on one of them. Archon's a 5-6, so I get one for free. These don't have trample. I think I want to untap with a land before blocks. And then I untap with Symbiote after blocks. 5, 10, 15, 1, 2, 3, 16. I can go to 1. Yeah, okay. Let's line up these blocks. Block here. That's the thing I actually want to kill. Chump. Chump. And I take 5, 10, 15, 16. Go to 1. Is that good enough? Make sure I'm counting correctly. <laughs> this is This is everything. Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, I'm at one. Do they have gut shot in their deck? That would get me real good. Pick up my visionary. Go to one. Cast crater hoof. Win the game. Please don't gut shot me. I guess they're just dead. I don't even have to show them the hoof. Right, untapped nettle sentinel by bouncing a forest. Untapped. Shep by bouncing a forest. Good thing I killed the Birchler Ranger. Okay, they're gonna let me cast the hoof. I'll take it. Okay, so one, two, three. Visionary is free to cast because it will pay for itself. And it might still draw a cradle or another creature. Another creature it is. I'm netting one mana each time I cast a two drop. I'm netting two mana each time I cast a one drop. Keep it going. All right, party's over. So one, two, ooh, ooh. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they're hoofed into the dirt. Guess I might as well make a 
an insect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Hoof, there it is. Ooh, that was fun. <laughs> we got a big yeah in the chat from the opponent. They knew what was going on. They knew I wouldn't natural order that early if I wasn't holding the hoof. They can count to eight. They know what's going on over there. That was surprisingly interesting for an elves game one. Normally it's just ships in the night and someone's fucking dead. The bad news is, Testacular is going to know how to do this a lot better than I do. Do Is Progenitus even part of this plan? The Archon was actually insane. Like, getting the first Archon was a big deal. Grist is good. I don't think Ooze is going to be important. I actually just think we have to build for speed. I'm not even on Progenitus. Maybe I am. No, because I'm going to draw it. <laughs> Guaranteed. All of my speed are going to stay in the deck. I guess Visionary is kind of the slow one at this point. And I do like the Plows. I don't care about Thoughtseize. And this is my plan. Just hoof. There it is. I gotta cut one more card. Probably a Symbiote. So I'm down to three Symbiotes, two Visionaries. I can Zenith for them if I need them. Actually, I'm gonna go down to one Visionary and keep four symbiotes. Just maximum speed, maximum one drops. That's how I'm approaching this matchup. Uh, this is a pretty fast natural order. I'm going to keep this. Yeah, I don't even think you can keep Progenitus in this matchup because it just dies to the combo. It doesn't even race House or Shepherd, just heads up, much less with any additional support. Like if they actually cast natural order, you're dead. Go ahead. They're going to take the Zenith. Unless they have two Thought Seizes and they're going to try to get to the Natural Orders before I can get them. <laughs> we got a stink face in the chat. That is... The plan was to go after Natural Order. So that's interesting. Testacular just revealed to me that they brought in Thought Seize for the matchup and they value Natural Order the most. Which obviously Natural Order is important. But them having Thought Seize is pretty telling. They also have Plow. Are they just a Maverick deck after board? Heritage Druid. I'm not going to take that trade. Ooh. Virtual Rangers is not a bad one. Ranger Danger. I could have casted face down as a 2 2, just a brick combat, but I think that's much worse than just casting it face up and casting Natural Order next turn. They could have Swords to Plowshares after board. Like, there's the Savannah. It's reasonable to believe that's the case. They could also natural order right now, just elf, four mana, natty. If they go for Archon right now, they know that my hand is functionally empty. Zenith for two, that cannot be countered. Yep, visionary, okay. They're setting up. If they get another natural order out of my hand. They're doing the work here. Putting it in where they can. Let me get a Dried Arbor at the end of the turn. One deck. <laughs> That's funny. I can fetch for another nat Dried Arbor. Or I could just Savannah and sack the one that I already have. If I get Hoof, what happens? I have. Okay, so if I fetch for the other Natural Order, or the other Dried Arbor, I actually only have three mana, so that's that's off the table. If I. One, two, three, four. Natural order, sacrifice, dried arbor. It's the same thing as Llanowar Elf, except Llanowar Elf is also an elf. Hoof is 5, 8, plus 4 is 12. They have to block, and then they're sort of in protection mode. I could also just get the Archon. I think I want to hoof, blast in for a turn, and then I can natural order again next turn. Let's demand a block here just take some material off the board reduce their life total to one. Oh no i did that math wrong okay there are two let's go in my head i had 12 and 14 backwards which is just a weird thing to do and i'm dead on board okay <laughs> they outplayed me like a fox there should have got the archon i guess i didn't see the cradle wasn't face up so 
that was that was rough. Okay. They have thought seizes in their deck. So that means they think that's important. Do I also think that's important? I think that developing my own plan is fine here. And I think that Swords to Plowshares is a better game piece in this matchup than Thoughtseize is. That is just how I feel about that. Okay. Here is my deck. Same deck going back in. Oh no, the tragic Dried Arbor Hand. This hand's really good otherwise, but I'm going to mulligan. There we go. Keep this and send... Do I send the Plow? Do I send the Heritage Druid? If I send Heritage Druid, I still have Birchlore plus Visionary. Alright, yeah, Heritage Druid is gone. I'm going to fetch Savannah, play Birchlore Ranger. There's Birchlore Ranger. I let on Birchlore Ranger because that means I can cast Visionary next turn and then tap them right away for mana to cast the Symbiote. They thought sees me now, whatever. I could also Visionary next turn plus Plow. Sounds like a good play. All right, I'm going to slow roll this Cradle. Get this set up. Is playing Visionary, or, okay. I am going to play the Symbiote and pass. This leaves the shields down for a turn two kill, but I'm just going to hope they don't have it. The Elves Mirror, historically, is one of my least favorite matchups to play because it's such a crapshoot. But the sideboard plan of four Thoughtsies, four Plow, and Grist being in the deck, like, and since the printing of Allosaurus Shepherd, like a lot more interesting things are going on than the previous. Good luck, here we go. And I'm kind of into it at this point. Try it, Arbor Go. Put it in my veins. I will take two from that card. And I am going to bounce my Visionary in the end step. I think drawing more cards is going to be really important here. Pick that up. And Visionary. The Birchler Ranger gives me a lot of freedom to tap my lands. And I'm going to tap Ranger and Elf to play Heritage Druid. I'm going to tap Cradle for four. And we're going to take another draw here. Jeez. Sad times. I'm going to continue slow rolling this Swords to Plowshares. I could also just plow the Dryad Arbor right now. Like, how do I get punished for this? If they just go Cradle Natural Order, I never get priority. But even that, I can plow the hoof. If they just make Progenitus, then I have three draw step or three turns to race it. Like they make Progenitus draw step, they attack once draw step. Maybe it's two turns. The Ranger is really good. Query on Ranger also. I think it's time to pull the trigger. Knock out Birchler Ranger. That's their big mana source right now. Hope that doesn't punish me. There's definitely hands they could have where that collapsed the entire plan, and there's hands they can have that don't care about that at all. And we're about to find out which one they are. Ooh, what do Foothills go? Is that the play? Nice. I'm gonna pick up my Visionary. Keep these cards coming. I'm just looking for a banger now. Visionary. That's a banger. I can cast. What do I want to do here? Do I cast anything? I can one, two, make another Heritage Druid, fetch Dryad Arbor, cast Natural Order. This is the biggest hoof I could muster. Hope it's good. Hoof is on the stack. Bang. Untap Birchler Ranger, picking up my Visionary again. Cast Visionary with my floating mana. We got the GG's in the chat. We beat the Master. Testacular taken down with their own deck. Not that that is a particularly huge accomplishment because the Elves matchup is frequently a crapshoot, like I said. But we did it, and I do think we made some good decisions. We may have made a terrible game-losing decision in Game 2 when I just got in with my hoof, but that's hard to know. I did like the Swords of Plowshare plan over the Thoughtseize and rewarded for it. On to the final round. I'm on the play in the final round.
playing for four and one, and I'm gonna keep this hand. It ramps. I can zenith for zero, and then do stuff after that. There's a natural order and a shepherd to back it up in my hand. Got to get there. Definitely getting basic. I'm already exposed to removal here with the dried arbor. Don't want to expose myself to wasteland even further. There's the arbor. Let's go. Let's do the thing. Island. Okay. Island is good. Land is good too. Allosaurus Shepherd. Nice island. See you later. Wirewood Symbiote. Let's protect the Shepherd from removal. Metal Sentinel is in play now. And I'm just going to pass the turn and have a gigantic turn 3 natural order. That can't be countered. That's my plan. It's firing in a brainstorm in my main phase. Which is the same thing as the end step. I'm not doing anything here. Luckily that's Island and not Tundra. So they can't set up Terminus right now. They could set up a two turn Terminus. Like if they go Tundra and then Brainstorm. Okay. Fetching there clears the top of their deck even if they had a Tundra. Oh god. Are we getting just Doomsdayed out right now? Someone's dead right now. They're clearly a combo deck though. Virtual Ranger. Okay. I can... Virtual Ranger is free money. I can cast this because the Nettle Sentinel will pay for it immediately. I'm just getting more material onto the board. So my hoof is unstoppable. Tap these two elves. Play Symbiote. This comes into play and then tap Nettle Sentinel and Allosaurus Shepherd for mana. Symbiote. Untap Shep. Pick up Birchler Ranger. And then does replaying this do anything? That just cost me the mana I just made. Do I get half a mana out of this deal? One, two, three. Oh, I was supposed to untap Dryad Arbor. That's what I just did wrong. All right, that's fine. I think I got half a mana out of that. <laughs> I'm just throwing cards around for fun and not necessarily profit. Okay, tap. I'm making this so much harder than it needs to be. Tap Nettle Sentinel and this for mana. Tap this for mana. Untap this, picking up this, and then one, two, Jesus. Significantly harder than it had to be. Uh, now I can play the Ranger again. <laughs> Storm is like seven. Okay, I think I figured this out. Did that make half a mana, that thing I did, or did I just like circle jerk? I don't actually even know. Please tell me. Creature Hoof Behemoth. And I will attack with my super lethal squad of creatures. I suspect this is Doomsday. It could be Ad Nauseum, but it's got to be a combo deck. In which case, Thought Seasons are coming in. Collector Roof's coming in. If I was sure they were Ad Nauseum, I would have the Ley Lines, but I'm not sure of that. In fact, I think it's more likely they're Doomsday, just because that's a more playable combo deck right now. Scavenging Ooze, doesn't matter. The Visionaries get shaved. And the Wirewood Symbiote, I believe, is the line here. We've played a number of combo matches this league. The plan is still the same. Maybe Grist is worse than Wirewood Symbiote. Grist has to be worse than Wirewood Symbiote, right? Yeah, that's just a three drop that doesn't have relevant text in the matchup when I could have a one drop that has relevant text in the matchup. Okay, submitting this deck. This is where I find out that they are actually Grixis Control, and I died a Plague Engineer. But in the meantime, here's this deck. That's why you win game one. Got that signature Elf 7 that I have to mulligan. I will keep this and bottom the hoof. Actually, with Cradle and Glimpse, do I bottom hoof or do I keep hoof in my hand? I think I bottom Bayou. Yeah, actually, I'm going to keep the hoof around. Prismatic Vista, Island, Ponder, sure. They did not shuffle their library. I'm going to play my Shepherd. If this is Doomsday, that is a deck that has days in it. Ooh, could I have one next turn if I fetch Dryad Arbor instead? Does that change anything? No, I think it's the same amount of mana. 
because I would my land would count for cradle, but I also wouldn't have this land in play. So Bayou plus Shepherd is two mana next turn. Yeah, I think it's the same. Bloodstained Mire, Brainstorm Bloodstained Mire. Where are we going with this? Is it is it my doom? Oh, fatal push. That's dirty. I am going to simply pass the turn here and fetch Dryad Arbor at the end. I'm not going to just run this Heritage Druid out when I could draw two cards off it next turn. Or more cards if the hits keep coming. I'm in some pretty bad shape to a uh, Fatal Push here. But they didn't have it. There's Dryad Arbor. Come on deck. Nettle Sentinel. Ugh. Did not need a third Glimpse. Glimpse. Ooh, Force of Will. Pitching Narset. Oh, ew. What the fuck? Don't do that. Okay, I'm gonna glimpse again. I'll at least draw one card off this Heritage Druid. The triple glimpse hand is not what I'm in the market for. At least we scared them into pitching their Narset. Wow. This might be a control deck after all. Oh, they just had another Narset. Good thing I drew all three glimpses this game. Him to Tarak. Wow. This is definitely not your average Doomsday deck. And by average Doomsday, I mean Doomsday at all. How do I want to play this turn? What's in my deck to Zenith for right now? That actually matters at all. I boarded out the Grist, didn't I? Because I thought this was a combo deck. Yep, Grist would be the one to get right now. What is in the deck? I boarded out Scavenging Ooze too, didn't I? And Rex Age didn't come in. Probably just get Allosaurus Shepard. Because Shep can win the game on its own. They can't daze this. If they want to force it, they'll be down to one card in hand, minus the Hymn to Tarak. But they get a draw step plus Nars at activation. Bad times. Another force, wow. They do not want to let me play this game. Which is fair. That is what control decks are supposed to do. Force pitching Snapcaster Mage. Okay. 100% not Doomsday here, by the way. Uh, do I want to attack? Yes. I'm going to put a damage on Narset while I can. Then if they activate her, she is gone. And that turns on my Visionary, turns on Zenith 4 Visionary, turns on this Glimpse in my hand. The glimpse won't be in my hand at that point. They're about to him me. Okay. Narset is small now. Yep, threw her right in the bin. Found a Fatal Push. <laughs> him to Turok and Fatal Push. Rough stuff. All right, there's that card. If I can ever put it on the stack, it's pretty powerful. But I think I've been squeezed out of this one. Now there's Strix. Okay. And Fatal Push. Cool. All of my Natural Order targets are right here in my graveyard in hand. And I drew Natural Order. Right now I'm playing for more information about their deck. Jace. Okay. I'm sorry you all have to watch this, but I do have to play this game out to get more information about their deck. The, they have the Brewer's Advantage on me. I wasted this sideboard game thinking they were doing something different. I guess there's also some possible world where I just grind back in. I, just, I don't think that's likely, but anything could happen. Ooh, Badlands. They are a Grixis deck. Or at least have a Red Splash for some reason. Let's hope that they're just a blue-black control deck that splashes Red Blast and they're not a full Cold Guns command deck. Plague Engineer confirmed. Okay. Thoughts Eases are out. Plows are in. Progenitus is also coming in. And this Archon doesn't even matter if I put it on the stack because the Jace can just bounce it. Uh, almost just jam this into play. But Plague Engineer says no. At some point I will concede this game, but I really want to know what this Red Man is about. First, like if they have Cola Guns Command, show it to me. All right, it does appear to be Grixis Control, Volcanic Island, and Badlands. It's not just a red splash and a blue black deck. It is does seem to be actual Grixis. Another Cradle, not what I'm looking for. Another Strix. Here come the Beats. The Drakorian Ranger can't play that one. Plague Engineers in play. It's a powerful card. A third Narset. Jeez. That's rough. 
and a second plague engineer. Good to know. I believe that's the hard lock. I think I was already hard locked. But now it's extra hard. Another him. Okay. I can concede now. I've seen enough. Grixis control. They did trick me into thinking they were doomsday by fetching basic lands and aggressively brainstorming on their own turn. Well played. Oh, Archon is out. Progenitus is in. Grist is in. Oof is out. The visionaries are all back in. Ooze is in. Swords to Plowshares is probably better than Thoughtseize. Though I'm not mega excited about either. Maybe I do the Arnold Palmer, where I just leave in some plows in case they draw. In case the game goes long and I need to answer a thing, but I don't want to actually draw one if I don't need it. And against triple Narset and this control deck, I think Glimpse gets a lot worse. And if I'm not Glimpsing, Heritage Druid's pretty bad. And if I'm not Heritage Druiding, Metal Sentinel's pretty bad. We're just settling into... Abzan Maverick. I do think I want all the Thought Seasons after all. And I'm going to leave a couple of glimpses in the deck for value. I need to cut two more cards though. Maybe it is another Nettle Sentinel. And they're not a Wasteland deck. Maybe I don't need Quarian Ranger. Though Quarian Ranger does help jam early natural orders. I'm going to shave one Elvish Visionary. The fact that they have three Narsets makes that card stock go down quite a bit. This is kind of a mess. I'm not in love with it, but they're putting me in this tricky position with this sideboard plan that's kind of all over the place. Okay, um... I can't mulligan a functional hand with elves. I think that is just against the rules. Wish I had a black mana for a Thoughtseize, but we'll get there, maybe. Here's my land war elf. Pass the turn. No fatal push, no problem. Alright, that is a problem. I'm going to attack for one, and then play my Symbiote. In for one, Symbiote's in play. And step Brainstorm. Are they back onto a Doomsday deck? If this is just a Doomsday deck that turns into full on Grixis control out of the board, and then back into Doomsday, I'm going to be bummed out. A Doomsday deck would not fetch Basic Mountain. I don't know why any deck would fetch Basic Mountain against Elves. Okay, which of these is actually a, a bigger problem for me? I think I want to keep the symbiote. That makes the rest of their removal pretty bad. Come on, visionary. Shepherd. Okay, yeah, protecting Shepherd with symbiote is pretty great. Still lacking black mana. Heartbreaker. Like if they play Plague Engineer this turn, I can pick up the Shepherd. I think they still have to name Elf, and then I can plow it. Him to Torok, sure. Yeah, they got both Thought Seizes, that's great. I couldn't cast those anyway, sucker. Straw Cradle and mash for a bunch of damage. Or just attack for three, that works too. Here they come. This is unexciting, but Natural Order off the top gets to work. There's a lot to like about my position. I don't like that they're a Brainstorm deck and I'm not. That feels like it's cheating. You gotta give me the Brainstorms too if you got them. That's just the rule. It's just good etiquette. You appear to be passing the turn. Ooh, Scavenging Ooze. There is a creature in the graveyard. Attack for three. I might have just run into a Snapcaster here. Shit. Uh, but I have Swords of Plowshares. But if I recombated. Oh, there's no cards they can cast in the graveyard here. Do I have to just accept this trade? I think that I do. Plague Engineer is too big of a deal. I have to let them just take my symbiote. Yeah, that sucks, but it is the way of things. Here's Scavenging Ooze. I don't think I'm just going to eat right now. Yeah, I am actually. I'm not doing anything else with this mana. Like if they have Engineer, they have Engineer, and I don't want them to be able to K-Command that my Ooze or pick that Snapcaster back up. Plague Engineer is in play. That gets rid of my Shep. I still have the Plow because I was disciplined about it. Please Resolve. They can't Fluster or Spell Pierce this. They have to force it. Force Pitching Snapcaster. That was a good deal. 
And I can attack with my ooze that I think they have to block. Ooh, they didn't block. Fearless. Shameless. Exile that. Just feeding the ooze. Put them on a two turn clock. I'll leave one mana up in case they have a snapcaster. Oh no. Narset. You're killing me. Narset finds. No! Curse my pained existence. I saw Exile Sudden Edict on the way out. I think that was my chance to win this game. It just went away. Okay. Maybe we're still in it. And then I can attack Narset. Yeah, that plow would have won the game if they didn't have the Narset to find push. The ooze was lethal. I think it was good for seven. They have to dump their Narset. Founds Colgon's command. Yuck. Luckily there are no creatures in their graveyard. They can hit me in my upkeep. Or in my draw step and make me discard the card I draw for the turn. It's pretty cruel. Or they could wait until they find a Snapcaster or Baleful Strix. Because they're not actually under pressure right now. I mean, they are under pressure, but not so much that they have to fire off their amazing spell right away. Right, are we getting draw stepped or are they just holding it? Okay, that was a great draw for this. I don't care about that. So they get to kill my ranger and I have to discard this forest. Attack. I mean, that does take a bunch of damage off of the board because that could have been a dryad arbor. Yuck. Brainstorming. All right, I think the window is closed. I could draw natural order right now. And if under some miracle it resolves, I could win the game. That's not what I meant by draw natural order right now. I'm going to keep attacking their face. I just I can't get Jace dead, and I need to limp over this finish line somehow. The Strix. Good news is discard's not very good right now. The bad news is I drew a Crater Hook Behemoth. And now they're selecting from six cards and four still in the hand. I need to draw Natural Order, and it has to resolve, and they have to not have another Edict, and they have to not kill my Dried Arbor along the way. Yuk. Narset found Narset. Okay. Come on, Natural Order. We can still do this. It's still possible. There is a world. I'm not going to attack. I want to keep my creatures on the board so I have something to sacrifice to Natural Order if I ever draw one. They just narceted a Fatal Push into their hand. Fatal Push my Dryad Arbor. Plague Engineer on that. Okay, so now I need a land and then Natural Order. It's getting rough. I think we're going to come up a little short against Grixis Control at the end of the day here. Played their replacement Narset. Keep the cards flowing. Two cards in their hand. Oh god, another fatal push. Please be out of black sources. Nope. No luck. If I draw a fetch land, and then natural order, in that order, there's a chance. Alright, that's a land. Now I need a creature and natural order, and the creature can't be a 1-1 one, one elf. And I get to activate Jace at least twice in the meantime. Narset found Brainstorm. They have the fetch land to go with it. There are not enough lands in the deck to cast Greater Hoof Behemoth if I just draw every land in my deck before I die somehow. That's still not good enough. Another Engineer. Do they name Insect, Dryad, or just double up on Elf here? Doubled up on Elf. That makes sense. Ooh, should have named Insect. Probably should have left that card in my hand. Like, if I draw Natural Order, but then I don't have 4 mana going into it. Like, this just dies to everything. Maybe they'll ignore it and I get to sneak Natural Order onto the stack. At this point, if they don't have a Counterspell in their hand, I don't know what's going on. That's not true. What's going on is that they boarded out all their Counterspells, but I know that's not true because there's one in the graveyard right now. Okay, Natural Order. Off the top. I didn't board them out, did I? No. Every single one is still in the deck. Come on, deck. Ah! No! Alright. Now they have to hit me with a discard spell. They have to him to Turok me. And then I have to draw Natural Order. And it has to resolve. Three Natties. One Progenitus in the deck. Drew both targets before a single Natural Order. 
that's the elf life. If you don't have brainstorm, you don't get to complain storm. Hit me, hit me, hit me, yes. Progenitus is back in the deck. Time to draw. Actually, Progenitus doesn't even win anymore. Even before the Fatal Push. The Fatal Push shut it down, but if I draw Progenitus at four, I'm still just dead to combat. Alright. GG's. Grixis control. They played right into my hands, discarding my Progenitus like that. Moral victory. Okay. Lost to Grixis control. That is a very difficult matchup. Normally, Elves is really well positioned against blue decks, because the blue decks don't really have the card advantage to keep up on one for one trades you need like a terminus at a clutch point or you need like engineer explosives pyroclasm supreme verdict you need those things and plague engineer is better than all those things because it gets the creatures now and gets the creatures later like you can't even hold back in your hand and rebuild so that was pretty brutal to get paired into the black control deck Black is not a really popular color in Legacy right now because it's not very good compared to what green offers with Endurance and Uro, and then what white offers with Prismatic Ending. There's just a lot of reason to be Bant, not a lot of reason to be Grixis. Grixis also really can't beat an Uro. It's really bad at beating that card, and that card's everywhere. So Grixis is not well positioned, which means that Elves is better positioned, but you are going to run into all sorts of decks in Legacy. That's part of the magic of Legacy. There's a lot of decks that you can play against any of them at any time. Putting up a 3-2 and two finish with this deck. The losses were close. The wins, some of them were steamrolls, some of them were close. This was a good back and forth match of magic, league of magic, set of matches. And I do like elves. The Swords of Plowshares were pretty good. I don't think I've ever put Swords of Plowshares in elves before. And I hope I don't do that in real life, because I maintain a foil elf deck in real life, and if I have to get the F&M foil plows, that's going to break me. So I'm not going to do that. Let's hope that doesn't end up being the case. Thank you all for watching. Testacular, thank you for the list. Eric, thanks for asking me to play it. Remember to like and subscribe the video and the channel. If you want to support the channel even more, Patreon and YouTube membership let you do that and get some cool perks along the way. If you want to shop for cards, make sure to use my TCG Player link. That helps out the channel. It costs you nothing. Thank you so much for all your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.